And Woodrow Wilson said, hey, it's going to be there. 1914. Hmm. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. How? Through philosophy and vain deceit. That's why your mind is just worthless thinking. Vain deceit. Vain lies. Worthless lies. After the tradition of men, see? And that's how most people are following these things after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. The rudiments of the world. And not after Mashiach. Show me where Mashiach ever shy. Honor that. You just, you just heard what he said. You heard what he just said. Concerning his mother, his brothers, and his sisters. He say, this is my mother and my brother and my sister, them that do the will of my father, which is in heaven. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the tradition of men. Mother's Day is a tradition of men. In America, 19, look it up, 1914. President Woodrow Wilson acknowledged it as a holiday. So I call it. Because it has nothing to do with honoring your mother. He said, honor your mother and father, your father and mother every day. You can do something good for them any day. Not just one day, and then you do it on the day that's the human night sacrifice. People are being put to death. And you celebrating it. If you celebrating, you part of it. That's why the most I say he going in your affliction, you're gonna seek him. And when you cry to him, he say he's gonna laugh at you and mock you, make fun of you with the angels. Because you're not listening. So I say, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. We've been warned. This ain't nothing new. After the tradition of men, he said that's what you're dealing with. Follow the tradition of men. He just told you that. Your way of thinking is is brought about through the tradition of men and not through these precepts to get the real understanding of what how the Most High would have us to be righteous in his eyes. In vain to see worthless lies after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Mashiach. See, that's why he said, go to James 4 and 4. The book of James 4 and 4. He said, you adulterers, and adulteresses, you men and women that are adulterers and adulteresses in the eyes of the Most High when it comes down to how you serve Him. Know ye not? Don't you know this? That the friendship of the world, the friendship of following what the world would have you do? Since the topic is Mother's Day, the friendship of the world. That's so why he said what? First thing he's told us what? Come out of her, my people, that you receive not of her plagues, that you, that you don't do her sins and receive of her plagues. He's going to plague this place and he's going to plague you. He told us, hey, Masha Hoshai said, hey, you know, he ain't going to the most high on your behalf. So he said, you know how to do right and you do wrong. He said, you're going to be beat with more stripes than those that don't know. And you know. Let's see how you're going to deal with that affliction. See if you're ready for the most high. Remember, it says, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. He said, you ain't listening to his counsel. Therefore, he's going he gonna to laugh at your calamity and your desolation. Like a whirlwind is going to come. He said, like a tornado and a hurricane. Come on, you ready for the most high? Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. You hear that? Make it mean something different. He telling you, you're a friend of this world, you follow what they say, you're the enemy of the Most High. The world set up to send you straight to hell with it. They know where they're going. That's why they have everybody just follow what they do. Follow us. Come on, go to hell with us. You can go if you want to. I got to have an old saying. You can go to hell any way you want to. Just don't try and take me with you. For real.
And it's sad because you know all this, and then once the book is closed, you stupid. Like you don't know nothing. Deuteronomy 5 and 7. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Hear that? So that's what you're dealing with. But you're looking at you honoring your mother on this one day. And some of you going to honor on that one day next to next week. With the, with the, with the, before the day is over, y'all be arguing like you always have. Be disrespectful and so forth. Got one day, I'm going to be cool with my mom. This Mother's Day, you're going to be cool. The next day, you arguing. Some of you robbing them and doing all kinds of things, man. And you're going to pay the price. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's what's going on. All the way back to the Queen of Heaven. All the way back to Semiramis and all the rest of them. Salak Most High. About so much like I was shy, but even mentioning their names. You know, but I got to make it clear so you know. You can look it up for yourself. Look it up. The origin of Mother's Day. And you'll see all the things I told you initially. It'll all come up. Facts. Without a shadow of a doubt. You make the call. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta come out of this way that we uh, we just following the way of the world. Too many people dying right now, man. Most of the power of living, not the dead. It's too late. Once you die, it's you finished, man. It's it's over. Then it's the judgment. Matthew 15 and 8 again. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. They talk a good talk. And honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Their mind is far from them, we say. But in vain do they worship me. Hear that? Some people call it on the most high, no matter how you call it on them. He said, it's all worthless, in vain. They worship him, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Like Woodrow Wilson said, Mother's Day going to be a national holiday, holiday. Because, you know, you look at holiday, you know, if you know anything about vows, it's A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes why? So they change the Y of holy day into an I. Just like they have in the vows, they tell you. So I call them hella days. <laughs> because you can't find them in the Bible. Where they at in the Bible? So, go back to Psalms 106. So what we did, he said, learn not to wear the heathen. bunch of melanated Edomites because you're a heathen all the guys of the nation are idols so you following the way of the idols you wait you follow the, the God of this world so you are a heathen just like they are ain't about the way you look it's about the way you act the way you think the way you speak and the way you act point blank and it behooves everyone that's hearing this and hearing all this multitude of, of way of life to come back to it. Because you ain't going to learn now, you're going to learn later, but you're going to be made to learn. Cause everybody going to bow down. You're going to bow down. Now you're going to bow down later. You're going to bow down. Believe this. Psalms 106 and 35. But we'll mingle among the heathen and learn their works. See, and he said, learn not the ways of the heathen, but we mingled among them. But he told us he's going to scatter us among all these nations. Look, hold that. Get Deuteronomy. Man, I'm right there. Deuteronomy. Woo, wow, that's besides powerful, boy. I'm telling you, boy. Deuteronomy 2864. Y'all got to be able to wield that Bible to keep it with him. He be turning these pages. <laughs> Deuteronomy 2864. Wow, praise the Messiah. <laughs> and the Messiah shall scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth even until the other. And there, when you go amongst these all other nations, these heathens, 
and then thou shalt serve other gods. He's telling us what he's going to do to us. When we go among these other, he said, you're going to serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. A Christianity, they got that wooden cross they put up there, right? Stone, you got Islam, you got, that's the black stone, cobblestone that the Arabs go around seven times and throw rocks at, and that's the forgiveness of their sins and so forth. The cobblestone, that's a stone. The Buddha is a stone, you know. The, uh, all the things that you're looking at, the religions is dealing with what he said we would do. As he scatter us among these people, right? He told us he's going to do that because we ain't follow his laws, church, and commandments. We ain't follow, want to follow him. So I'm going to give you to the enemies, to your enemies. So that's why you look at Psalms 106 and 35. But we're mingled among the heathen and learn their works. And they serve their idols. Remember? All the gods of the nation are idols. So we serve in their idols. When you serve in, uh, and believe it in Mother's Day, and you're having a great time with Mother's Day, you celebrate the sacrifice of someone. Or the sacrifices of someone. A whole lot of people can be put to death. And that's what you celebrate. Serving their idols. Which were a snare. Which means it's a trap unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. You hear that? Sacrifice our sons and daughters unto devils. Until this day. And shed innocent blood. Even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. That's where they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Therefore, was the wrath of the Most High kindled against his people, the twelve tribes of Israel, insomuch that he abhorred, he hated his own inheritance, and he gave them into the hand of the heathen. There it is. He said, learn not to wear the heathen, but we are mingled among the heathen, learn their works. But he told us we go among them, don't learn them. Therefore, you got to think opposite of the way the heathens think. Better ask somebody, according to thus say the most high, as it is written. That's why he always said, you're going to know that I'm the most high. Bet you that. Try him. Try him. I'm just a messenger, but try the most high. See what you get. You think you bad or you think, oh, it's going to change. I know that's why I say you think like the heathen. I don't care if you call yourself Israelite or not. You're going you gonna to got something for you, though. Therefore was the wrath of the Most High kindled against his people. But they ain't going to be kindled against you, huh? You special, right? You that special one. Like he said, we special above all people, right? That's who you think you are in doing whatever you're doing that's contrary to what he's telling you to do and not do. Listen. Therefore was the wrath of the Most High kindled against his people in so much that he abhorred, he hated his own inheritance, his own people. Because we ain't listen to him. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen. And they that hated them, not loved them, ruled over them. Their enemies, they that hated them, is their enemies, he's saying. Their enemies also oppressed them. Until this day, we're being oppressed as a people. And they were brought into subjection under their hand. Now look what we do. And what we did. Verse 37. Yeah, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters under devils, right? Go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. We're looking at Mother's Day. Because we didn't create it. As the Israelites, we didn't create this. But we're mingling among the heathen and learn their works. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles, or these heathens, sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. When we gave our sons and our daughters to devils. So the heathens sacrifice to devils and not to the Most High. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. You're supposed to have fellowship with these people. Now when you know the truth, they're supposed to come and learn from us. We're the light of the world. Not them. Well, give them the Bible so let's talk. And you'll see. Like I said, if it was one of the what, a heathen that was bringing forth all this truth, everybody would be, be lined up to get it. Well, our people are rebellious. That's why he called us all kind of names. Sidest children. Nothing but like a minstrel cloth. Man, that's nasty, ain't it? 
wretched. That's why he did what he did and doing what he doing to us. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to the most high. And I would not that you should have you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the most high. You can't take in this, you can't you listen, you cannot drink the cup of the most high and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the most high's table. You can't be partakers of a Mashiach house table and of the table of devils. You hear this? You sit down to eat. You can't take this in and know the truth, and then you're gonna go over there and say, Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Mother's Day anyway. No. No. Not when it's set up all the way back to the Queen of Heaven. That's who you honor. You gotta understand this. While we sacrifice our sons and our daughters to devils, teaching them the same old wicked ways, the precepts and the concepts and the traditions of men. Point blank. Like I said, 1914, would Joe Wilson say it's going to be a national holiday? Mother's Day. Going all the way back here in America to Anna Marie Jarvis. See? But here we are, 2021, following the way of the heathen, learning the way of the heathen until this day. That's sad, man. Romans 1 25. Repent, y'all. Romans 1 25. Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie? So, who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie? You hear the truth of the Most High, but who changed it into a lie? And worship and serve the creature. More than the creator. Worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Worship and serve what Woodrow Wilson set up more so than the most high. Mother's Day. Is that something? Worship and serve the creature more than the most high. Mm, mm, mm. Who is blessed forever. Worship and serve the creature more than the most high. Mm -hmm. That's cold, y'all. People would rather people would rather follow the way traditions of men and and think about it. There's gonna be people that's gonna be put to death tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, but that day, I might say. And it's sad because there's so many deaths this year. So many deaths. So many deaths. Man. Look at, um, let's go into the Apocrypha, if I can. Go to, um, go to the book of, uh, Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to look at Wisdom of Solomon. Because a lot of this, like I said, it's nothing new. That's why you got to know. All these things have an origin, and it's not new. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. Um, verse 12, we start at verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Now, understand this. When you honoring Mother's Day, you honoring the origin of the idol that it represents. You can think you honor your mother if you want to, but you really honoring why they set it up. 
you know, going back to, like I said, you go back to the Greek Empire, you're dealing with R-H-E-A. That was their idol. I ain't saying it, I'm just spelling it. So, dealing with D-I-A-N-A -A also in the Bible. Same one, going all the way back to Semiramis, Queen of Heaven. Look at that. For the devising of idols, remember all the gods of the nations are idols. So, the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication. The devising of idols. The beginning of spiritual fornication. Isn't that something? Now, which is going against the laws of the Most High, the statutes of the Most High, and the invention of them, the corruption of life. You hear that? The invention of following the heathen, whose gods are all idols, your life will be corrupted. So when you follow on what the heathen has said in their holiday, Mother's Day, your life going to be corrupted. And the Most High said, hey, he's going to laugh and mock at you when your desolation comes, when he visits you. And when you cry on him, he say, hey, you got to seek him early. And when you seek him early, he's going to laugh and mock you and bring destruction and desolation on you. You heard what he said. He said, and you're going to know that I am the Most High. Over and over again, he say that. You're going to know then. He said, but neither were they from the beginning. Neither shall they be forever. Because he's going to destroy all of them. And all of you that's following and hooked in spiritual fornication. But by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. You hear that? Vain, worthless glory of men. They entered into the world. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. As you come to an end, as they come to an end, those that's created all these things, invented all these inventions of evil, all you that's following them, you evil too. You will be put to death. Straight up. As it is written. Look at uh, uh, verse 16. Thus in process of time, an unrighteous custom grown strong was kept as a law. Like you see now. It's a law. Second, second first day of the fifth month, Esau fifth month is called Mother's Day. It's on the books as a law. In a lot of places, it's shut down. Period. Engraving images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. You see? Just like, I mean, come on. The graven image going all the way back to what they call the Madonna, the black Madonna, Semiramis. Come on. Nimrod. To Mars. See, this is real, y'all. Whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visions from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that, that by this, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent as he, if he were present. This really dealing with Caesar Borgia, that so-called white image that they set up of a of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai, which is a lie, because it tells you in Revelation one, first chapter, in the fourteenth verse, that he had hair of wool, and fifteenth said his feet like in the fire brass, if it burned in the furnace. You burn anything, the furnace is gonna be what? Ashes? What color? Black. Very very dark skinned man. So that's just facts. So, but it's still dealing with. What we said in verse 12, for the revising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. And when you go back to look at Christmas, how Timberamas, the same one they honoring, how she set up uh, the Christmas tree and so forth. When you read Jeremiah 10, 1 to 5, that's why we said, learn not to wear the heathen, but you're going to follow Christmas. Get your Christmas tree, bring that idol into the, into the house, you're going to bow down to it. You know, you got mothers that you honoring. That don't bow down. To, you bowing down to that idol to put something under that tree. You bowing down to that. How many times you done done that? And bow down to get something from under that tree. You bowing down to that idol. Hmm. It's sad, y'all, but it's real. You see? And this, these things are not something new.
and they they laughing it they laugh it's all about making money you're nothing but commerce you got people all on the street selling everything in these hella days only if they only knew the most highest days In the days we say we're going to honor. People don't even honor that. On the days they should. You give them a calendar, just a calendar, and you say, okay, well, dang, nobody really, nobody's really going to do it. Nobody's who's really doing it. That's why I applaud everyone that's actually hearing the word, speaking the word, and doing the word. I have a great chance to be the elect. Those that don't, you just perpetrating the fraud. You better repent and get yourself together because this is serious as serious as serious can be. You better hear it. Um, since we're in Wisdom of Solomon, look at uh, um, jump to verse 21. It's going to be 21 to 26. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. Hear that? This was an occasion to deceive the world. Now, deceive the world being what? Lie to the world? Last I look, go to Psalms 58 and 3. Psalms 58 and 3. The lie to the whole world, deceive the world. This was, a, this was, and this was, and this was an occasion to deceive the lie to the whole, to the world, right? Okay? Psalms 58 and 3. Bring it on home. The wicked are estranged from the womb. So the wicked is described and identified in Job 924. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the wicked man, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? We bring it on home. Oh, I ain't brought you out in the wild. Remember him? There it is. <laughs> Must have a shy. It's coming to judge and make war. But they got him set up as a so-called white man, right? The wicked cover the faces of the judges thereof. He told the 12 apostles they're going to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So it's saying the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray. As soon as they be born, doing what? Speaking lies, right? Speaking lies. So now, go to Revelations. I'm just moving as the Spirit have me move. Go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. The 12th chapter. And we're going to read verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Right? So it's, this is not for the average person that reads this to understand it. Else it will be clear. You can read it and you understand it. Right? So it's a wonder in heaven. On this earth, and behold, a great red dragon. So we know the dragon is red. It's a having seven hands, seven heads, and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, right? So the seven heads are the seven leading empires of the Edomite nation, which are the Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the Russian, the British. You know, America came out of Britain. So that's kind of like consecutive order how they came into power. And the Ten Horns are the EEC, the European Economic Community, or the European Community, or NATO, which support the seven heads and seven crowns upon their heads, meaning powers and authority. Now, when you look at um, verse 9, so we know the dragon is red, it's, and the great dragon, who, which is red, was, was cast out. That old serpent, so we know the serpent is red. That old serpent that you read about in Genesis, the third chapter. That lie, the first liar, that lied to who? Eve, and then she brought it to Adam, fooled him. 
called the devil. Uh oh. So the dragon and the serpents called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. You hear that? Deceiveth the whole world. Lied to the whole world. Remember, the wicked is strange on the womb. They go straight as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Right? So now, it's telling us that the great dragon, which is red, was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Hear that? So the devil, Satan, the serpent, the dragon, and who else is red? Go to uh, right to the point, Genesis 25, 25. This is the first time anyone in this world came in this world that their color was identified. Because you know when we talk about color, people get an attitude about color, but here go color. The first color that I'm seeing is somebody that you can find somewhere else. That was different. It was Genesis 25, 25. It says, and the first came out red. Uh-oh, R-E-D again. There it is. The, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And Esau became a nation calling themselves the Edomites. You hear me say it all the time. You hear us saying it through the Spirit. So we know that the dragon is red, the devil is red, Satan is red, and I ain't even include the beast is red, and Esau is red. But listen to what it says. Revelation 12 and 9. And the great 